the number you have reached, 911, has been changed to a non-published number. You're listening to UCW Radio. In your face. All right, welcome to the latest segment of UCW Radio, and this is your host, Lou, a.k.a. Falcon Coparis. And I want to thank all of our listeners for the continued support just by listening to the show. We're trying to get some uh, interesting guests on, uh, from actors uh, to comedians to pro wrestlers to martial artists to leaders in martial arts um, and some other uh, interesting entertainment figures. Now, today on the show, we're going to have the UK bass singer Tara London on the show. Uh, she brings a touch of Nora Jones and Amy Winehouse with a dash of Carol King to the table. And honestly, if you haven't heard this girl sing, then you're missing something. Uh, but before we get to that, I have to give you some information. Uh, listeners can actually call in when the show is live. So get a pen and write this number down. It's 323-215-1446. That's 323-215. 2151446 and even when the show is over you can leave me a message and if it's interesting enough trust me it'll be played on the show for everyone to hear also if you're on twitter then you can shoot me out some questions or comments uh, while we're live uh, we'll, we'll read them off you'll know who the guest is beforehand so you can actually ask the questions you want to ask uh, for our guest my Twitter name is Louis Velasquez, that's L-O-U-I-S-V-E-L-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z. -E -E Follow me and ask away. Now uh, we have someone waiting on the phone. So we're going to switch to the phone line and get Tara London on the phone. And uh, here's Tara London now. Tara, welcome to UCW Radio. I want to thank you in advance for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today. Hi, Lou. You're more than welcome. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Fantastic. That, that, that's great. Um, I think I think what we need to do, Tara, we need to start at the beginning so that listeners can find out a little more about you and get a better acquainted with you. So can you tell us, you know, pretty much, you know, when you started to get involved in music? How did how did it progress? What happened? My interest in music developed from a very young age. I think uh, probably around about the time of primary school, which is kindergarten for you guys, about five or six. Um, my dad used to play a lot of blues, jazz, soul records, and and really loved kind of very early Elvis Presley and people like that. And I just developed a real sense of the way that music can kind of infiltrate your life and and your emotional kind of well-being, you know, sometimes making you happy or sad or, you know, just making you feel jubilant about something that you're hearing. And I really like the effect that music has on me and on people around me. And I guess that's where it kind of developed. And I started getting involved in kind of school choirs and stuff like that. And only kind of in the background because I was quite shy as a child. So I wasn't ready to kind of be at the forefront. And I never really believed that, you know, I could particularly sing or had any talent. I just kind of liked the way it made me feel. So, yeah, I'd say from about the age of five. Like a little magical, I guess. Very magical. I think it was a, a kind of eye-opener. It was a sense of wonder for me where, you know, even I'd watch some of those old films and kind of think, my God, you know, this woman, Doris Day, she's singing and, you know, and, and she just has this look of wonder about her and, and that magic that you just kind of mentioned just seem to come from, you know, from the speakers, really. <laughs> and, I, and I never understood it when I was young, but as I got older, I started to realize kind of how tangible music can be. Well, with some, they connect with music, and that, that's, you know, as you said, it can tug at your, your emotions, it can make you happy, sad, it can make you anything. Uh, it depends on yeah. what state of mind is. And that's the, that's the gift that musicians, that music artists, singers have. Um, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. Now, let, let me let me ask you something. You, you know, you you're involved in music, but there are a few other, um, I guess, areas of the entertainment industry that you are that you have been involved with. 
Can you go over that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I developed an interest in acting, particularly kind of musical theatre um, and stage acting, plays and such. Um, I think that kind of came from wanting to have another avenue to, in which to express myself and see if, you know, I've always been fascinated by people that are into method acting and stuff like that, where they can totally immerse themselves in another character and almost become somebody else in a play or in a film. Um, and they draw on their own experiences and their own challenges through life in order to portray a certain character or role. And I've always found that incredibly fascinating because I really enjoy everything that's created, everything, whether it's a piece of art or architecture or acting or singing or dance. All of the arts really do inspire me. And, and so I kind of tried my hand at acting for a while. I went to college to study acting and musical theatre and loved, absolutely loved my time there, but I did actually realise kind of towards the end of the end of the course that, that maybe acting wasn't necessarily for me, but I think music um, was continuously coming to the forefront and drawing me back and, you know, that maybe I'd just kind of sidelined a little bit, but I don't think I was ever going to kind of walk away from music to be honest. So. But you have, a, you have a great appreciation music and I think that's, that's fantastic because I've spoken to artists and I just find it interesting and I, I am going to ask you some questions. There's some artists yeah. I, I ask that, that say they appreciate music or some that, that are talented. I ask, would you go if you're on stage or you're in a concert and you're doing your, your thing, would you go and do a cover song of another artist that you that, that, that you love, a song that you love? Some artists say no. What to me, it doesn't make any sense because if you appreciate music, you should want to perform something great if you have the opportunity to do so. Absolutely. And I, you know, I 100% agree with that. I mean, I, you know, I do every now and again incorporate, um, covers, you know, into some of the live shows I do because I have a massive appreciation for other artists, you know, both established and unsigned. Um, there's a whole wealth of talent out there and people writing incredibly beautiful songs and, you know, with beautiful lyrics and melody lines and, you know, I do love music so, you know, it's not just about solely appreciating, you know, the stuff that I'm creating, it's about appreciating all the music that's out there. Um, and yeah, you know, old time kind of singers and stuff like Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald and, you know, these are classics and absolutely amazing songwriters and singers and how could you not how could you not want to perform you know some of the music that they've created you know when you create a song I think you know initially you write it for yourself but as soon as that song is recorded and you put it out there then you, you are, you're giving that away it's a gift you know you're giving it to somebody else for them to get something tangible from it and yeah you know I totally agree I think that artists should you know, want to perform other people's stuff and really embrace that. So, yeah, I'm definitely on that page. Oh, that's, 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 uh, that's good to hear because I, I do think you're talented. Um, and again, you know, you do have other artists that are out there that are so talented. But you, I, I'm going to say, and again, maybe I'm wrong, but you can correct me. Now, if you do do a cover of a song, are you, yeah. would you do it cabaret style? Or would you make it to your own? Um, no. What what I tend to do is if I cover somebody else's song, I mean, depending on the style of the song, you know, if it if it was something like Corinne Bailey Ray, for instance, then I would probably try to do it as faithfully to her version as possible, um, because you know she has a certain style and a vibe that you know I I find a, a, a kindred spirit with really. Um, so I would try and reproduce that as faithfully as possible. But, you know, if it's a style that's not necessarily within the genre of music that I'm creating, then I, you know, I might try and just change it a little bit just to fit with what I'm doing, really. Because, you know, obviously if people are coming out to see me, then they, they want to hear me kind of doing the type of 